Hi, welcome to the Mocum studio based in Sydney. I'm Stephanie Moffat, the design director for Mocum, and with me is Annie. Hi, I'm Annie Moyer, Mocum's product developer, and we are so excited to be streaming live to you today from the Mocum studio. This is actually going to become a weekly Instagram series, so every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Sydney time, tune into the Mocum studio Instagram and we'll be going live um, every week for the next few weeks and months to really share with you our bespoke design process, which is often a quite a hidden part of the business. And hopefully as the weeks go by, we can share some of our industry textile knowledge as well. Yeah, so today we're going to begin at the beginning and we're going to discuss how we start a collection and specifically how we choose and create the theme for that collection. So we really wanted to share, as Annie said, our storytelling with you and in particular over the next couple of weeks, we wanted to share with you how bespoke our design process is um, and the amount of levels and people involved in it, um, taking it from a pattern through to the um, end point into market because we really want for you to be able to um, express to your clients the value associated with our product. And um, we very much, um, uh, the Mocum Studio sorry, launches two uh, collections a year and they're thematic and we um, really start from scratch within the studio designing patterns and then developing them with um, mills all around the world and actually today um, this week we would have been in northern Italy at a trade fair at Lake Como that we go to every year along with the other trade fairs um, but obviously um, due to COVID-19 that area has been hit so badly and we just wanted to shout out today to the mills in that area. Um, a lot of them we've been working with for decades and they're friends of ours and we wanted to say that we miss you and we can't wait to get back there. We're we'll thinking be back. Of you. We'll be back. We can't <laughs> yeah. wait to get back and start um, our next collections with you. And we also wanted to shout out to everyone in the design community and say hang in there. So um, when we start to form a new collection, we often have two other collections on the go and one of which will be um, nearing completion and that we tend to be at the photography stage, working with the marketing department and working on the key messaging and the, um, storytelling, the storytelling and the language and how we want to take that to market the internal and external comms. The other, um, it tends to be in the early aspects of the design process where we'll be creating the designs, we'll be testing, doing colour work. Mm -hmm. And while that's happening, we also start um, researching the range and looking for th future um, themes and construction we ideas. We have like two or three on the go. Yeah, we yeah. generally have two slash three and it comes, that next one comes around quickly. So we like to be ready. Um, we obviously we work on annual financial parameters and SKU budgets and we look at um, historical sales data but today we really just wanted to share with you the more um, creative aspects of that. And there's three um, main areas of research for us. There's visual, conceptual and then construction. And visual um, is really looking at pattern and colour and um, we do a lot of that online. I mean Pinterest is one of our first port of call and it's something we're constantly working on. I love deep diving on Pinterest, um, not just looking at what's happening now but also looking at historical pattern, um, particularly um, the great thing about Pinterest is the more you drill you then find other sites like the Metropolitan Museum Archive, mm. Cooper Hewitt Archive, there's so much you can find. It's also a great resource for colour. We look at a lot of social media, Instagram, again, anything that's really image rich is, is good for us and online print and of course offline printed um, magazines are still really critical part of our process and we love being able to see our products and other products in situ um, and so that's a great place to see that and also um, fashion for us is another key influence within the Mocum Studio. Um, particularly luxury high-end fashion. When we travel, we love to go to the high-end areas and it gives you a chance to see those products, um, touch them, I mean textiles are so tactile, but also the other thing we love is seeing the fit-outs and because mm. they are so beautiful and so luxurious and it lets us see the textiles um, mixed with hard surfaces and other surfaces, which is what's in your home and so for us that's a really nice um, part of our development process. 
So Annie's going to show you um, some of the vision boards that we've had in the past. Yeah, we thought we would um, talk to our vision boards today because they are such a critical working tool for us. Not only are they the place where we, we pin and start our inspiration um, and as our ideas evolve, the collection boards evolve as well, but they're very much a working tool that we're constantly referring back to in the design stage and also the colour development stage. So this board here is our mood board and vision board for previously launched collection, the La Primavera range. And this collection, as you can see here from the images, was very much inspired by the feminine design movement. And when I say feminine design, I'm not talking gender specific or gender related. It's really a conceptual con uh, concept, and that is embracing femininity through curve and um, texture and color. And we're seeing that with beautiful curvaceous furniture and an abundance of archway um, archways and architecture and also color palettes becoming a lot warmer and a lot more feminine as well and as you can see here a lot of our images were a lot of our inspiration was pulled from high-end fashion and we're seeing um, a floral fixation in high-end fashion and it was really important to us to bring in a couple of beautiful decorative floral prints in our range we always look to high-end fashion for colour palette and motif references and then we evolve them and we develop them to be indicative to the interior design realm which is often a lot more, needs to hold a lot more longevity. It's not fast fashion, people tend to redecorate their home every 10 to 15 years. So we take aspects of what we see in fashion and we, and we resolve them. And another core theme that inspired this collection was the concept of visual optimism and this is really a concept where you can create joy and optimism via your visual environment and people do that through color and pattern and texture and you can see the color palette that we've pinned on this board is very saturated it's very joyful and it's very optimistic and this is very much um, re uh, referenced in the color palettes from the La Primavera collection Thanks, Annie. And optimism is definitely something we need at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so then the, the next one is conceptual. And that's really about us looking at culture and lifestyle trends. And our first port of call for that is the Trend Forecasting Agency that we work with. And they are an incredible um, wealth of ideas and information. And they have focus on long term trends, mega trends, culture lifestyle and for us that's where we get a lot of ideas around language um, and how we want to um, uh, explain um, the direction of the brand. Um, again we look at social media and print media, art and um, movements and architecture. Um, again when we travel we always try to um, go to a major exhibition um, and that um, is really inspirational and often we'll see things um, inspired by the range we're working on like when we were working on Pure we were at the Tate in London yeah. and we saw Yves Klein and yeah, Mondrian so it's really nice and it provides an affirmation for you that you're um, on, the right on the right track. Now this is a second mood board this is a bit of a sneak peek for you today because it's from an it's our working board for our upcoming collection Ikigai and this collection is really pulling on the same themes as La Primavera with the feminine design movement and also visual optimism, but it's taking on more of an Asian aesthetic. And given our geographical location and proximity to Asia, we have a shared inherent love of simplicity, of craft and of quality. And that is very much um, a main driving force for this collection. You'll see a lot of beautiful linens, um, a lot of intricate textures and intricate weaves, really heroing that Japanese concept of wabi-sabi, which is sort of celebrating beauty and imperfection. And when we started this range, uh, the beginning sort of concept stage was looking at antique Japanese screens because they have a beautiful modern simplicity to them that we wanted to capture within our watercolour hero print. And you can expect to see a really beautiful, very overscaled watercolour sort of oasis scene, which includes um, Japanese cranes and also beautiful references of wisteria and peony, which is pulled back in from the La Primavera collection. And 
with this uh with this range there is a, a really beautiful sort of nostalgic warm warming of uh, neutrals and our warmth in our color palette pink has been obviously an extremely popular color over the last few years and pink is very much evolved from being confined to the little girl's bedroom and is almost um, accepted now as a warm neutral and with this range we're really embracing a warmer color palette you'll see tones of parchment and calico and cream becoming important and also we're seeing that brown is really coming into the interior space as an important warm tone uh, over the last decade probably gray and monochromatic gray based neutrals have been extremely strong and things are starting to warm up now people are, are seeking comfort within their homes so this color palette is really resolved it's very calming um, and definitely a little bit warmer and one of our hero color palettes for this range is that of green and green really is nature's neutral and mother nature is the ultimate designer so we're excited to have a lot of green in this collection we're seeing green really sitting at the forefront of color trend forecasting and there's all shades of green within the ikigai collection so we can't wait to present it to you it will be due to launch um, in the market in the next six months and stay tuned thanks penny um, and then the final part of our research is researching constructions and this is probably one of the most important aspects for us um, and that's really what we're seeing in the textile industry at a trade fair level and this is an example of a construction board and this um, comes from our visits to not only um, trade fairs in Europe uh, but also to mill visits we love getting to visit the mills around the world because textiles are so cultural and every location has its own um, style and, and we'll talk yeah, yeah own handwriting we'll talk about that that that's going to be a topic for a future um, future um, discussion the rich history of textiles yeah. yeah and and the sort of cultural influence um, by um, region and um, we gather at those meetings. Uh, we, we go there also to work on um, current developments, but we also gather and we have an archive within the studio. So we come back and archive based on mills so that when we start a new range, we have a huge um, textile library to pull from. We also um, then pin our favorites onto mm -hmm. a construction board. And here's an example of some of the constructions we're heading towards. And you'll see there's a lot more dimension coming through also and um, Lots of bouquet. Lots of bouquet, lots of pile, milk. and of lots of linen, and that's yeah. another topic we're going to be talking about. The the development is such a part, um, collaboration with our mills, aren't they? Because they have such specific expertise, and so when we know what kind of construction we want to develop with, we know exactly who to go to, and it's very much a yeah. partnership of sharing IP. So we are either, um, we rely on the mills to, to send us their developments for inspiration, or we will go to them with looks that we wanting to create and then yeah. from then we start to develop um, together and yeah sharing that um, knowledge and, and moving the projects forward and then we um, start uh, we create these boards and we start discussing um, the themes internally and they are a really critical um, development tool for us not only as an aesthetic inspiration for us constantly referring back to them in fact we had to sort of yesterday redo the boards because we pulled them apart so much during the color process and he's constantly pulling them off to try and get the colors right um but they start to look quite tatty <laughs> they do and they're also a really um critical tool as a communication tool for where we want to head to our um, stakeholders within the business but you know the chosen theme initially can be quite loose and often has a working title and as we move through the range and we move through the development we hone that theme or we, partic uh, we pick particular areas to focus on mm. as we talk about it more and we understand what's resonating with people internally and some key people externally and um, all the while though we're looking at how we can um, relate that back to how we live in Australia and New Zealand and and how that um, we can create a unique um, take on that theme. And that's really critical for us. And for the range to always needs to represent how we live in Australia and New Zealand, because that's really sits at the core of the Mokum brand. And um, Absolutely. we just wanted to um, thank you for tuning in today. 
and Annie's just going to share with you how to enter our colouring in competition. Yeah, while we have you there, we wanted to remind you all, if you haven't seen it yet, to um, to get involved with the colouring in competition that we currently have running. So to enter, you simply visit our website, uh, jamesdunlaptextiles.com, and download the colouring in pages. We've got the beautiful uh, Peonia hair, which was taken from our original artwork of Peonia and the Papignon that Steph was holding up. And so you download the pages, get creative, use any medium that your heart desires, and be sure to be following both We Love Fabric and Mokum Studio Instagram accounts. And if you upload your entry to your personal Instagram, and then tag Mokum Studio and use the hashtag MyMokumMasterpiece. And the entries close on the 29th of April, and Steph and I will judge and announce the winners on the 30th. And you'll be in the running to win two beautiful custom-made Mokum cushions. Thanks, Annie. And next week, we're going to be talking about the bespoke process around um, jacquard development. So A behind the scenes. Yeah. So same back. time, same place. Join us next yeah. week. Kia kaha. Thank you. Thank you.